So for step one, charging the battery pack. I'm not going to be doing this. Uh, we won't need it until step 17. I don't necessarily know when I'm going to get to step 17. And depending on how you build your kit, um, maybe you're not going to get to step 17 for a while either. So I just choose to wait until I'm closer and needing the battery. In this case, step 17 requires you to check the RC equipment. So when you're getting closer to step 17 and you think you're going to be doing it uh, or near to doing it, that's when you can charge it. So I'm not going to do this. So we're going to move on to step two, which is attaching the gears for the rear gearbox. Now you can see there are a lot of pieces that we need to pull together for this. Um, and it, you can see that we're going to put a lot of the gears on the other side. We're going to put the differential in. Uh, there's so many pieces. There's a thrust bearing that's got to go in, um, etc. Now I've pulled together a number of things and I still need to pull out the thrust bearing, but I left this open because I want to show you something. It doesn't mention this, but the Blockhead motors and maybe all Hotshot 2s actually come with a separate bag. And you'll notice in here that there actually are four ball bearings as well as the two thrust bearings that you need. So the kit comes with four bearings. Um, so even though I got the full set of bearings, there are bearings that the kit comes with, which means I've got more than enough. So I'm going to, the ones where it says ball bearing, I'm going to use the bearings that actually came in the kit. So those are going to be these ones here that came with the hot shot. The plastic bearings, they're the ones that are getting replaced with the full ball bearings that I bought. The metal bearings are getting replaced with the full bearings that I bought. And then so on and so on. Now, I've got all the parts here, all the, ge all the gears, etc. But one interesting thing which I've not seen, you'll see here, MA-18, a urethane bushing. Well, this is technically just like a piece of foam. And they want you to cut that in half, and you can see that here. And they're going to be placed on either side of the gears in the, um, in, the, in the gear joint. So on the outside, which will basically create a bit of sponge or softness between the joint and the drive shaft. I've not seen that before, so that's interesting. So we're gonna need to cut that in half. So you can just use a Zacto knife or something like that and to cut it in half. But once we get to it, I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing with that. So the thing is, we're gonna be working on this. So I'm going to set this up and we'll get started and we'll work with this uh, G4 piece first and work and, and go from there. So first off, let's work with the G4 piece here. And you can see that we've got the propeller joint, which you'll know it's the right one because it's a perfect match when you put it onto this diagram. But they're showing you greasing it up, then it goes into a bearing, then it goes through into the, into the gearbox, through the thrush bearing, into this piece right here that looks like that. Um, and then there's the MA-12, which is the bushing, which we're replacing with a bearing as well. Now, because of the way this is done, um, I typically don't grease up anything when I'm using ball bearings, but I am going to do it this time. Um, I opened the tube of grease, and you'll notice it kind of exploded a bit. So I'm actually gonna use a bunch of this grease on this gear. Might as well. And you can be liberal and if you want to try and save as much grease as possible, but I think with the gearbox, you want to make sure there's a fair bit of grease on there. And I mean, that's going to be, that'll, that'll be good. But the tube they give you is pretty small. So you may find that you don't have enough, but you know, you can kind of eye it and see what might be best. Now, I am going to grease this. And like I said, I wouldn't normally um, when it's a ball bearings. But because this is a gearbox, I kind of want to do it anyway. Um, and I've done that with 
a lot of the gearbox pieces before with some of the other kits. So let's go, let's take a look at this. I'm going to use one of the ball bearings that I bought to replace the uh, bo plastic bushings. So we're going to stick that onto there. You can see that this is going to fit inside of there all the way through, but you can see that that gear that I was talking about, you end up having to use a thrust bearing and you see how you've got all the little balls in there. That is the thrust bearing. That is going to go inside there, just like that. And that is going to slide into here just like that and you can also see that they're going to use the little ma12 which would be the brass bushings but we're not going to do that we're going to put one of the ball bearings in there and i'm going to slide that in just like that so that we can then take the propeller joint and you can see inside there i think a little bit sort of we're going to stick that through all the way make sure that it actually goes in there correctly and fits correctly into that hole because i want to make sure that it's fitting into the thrust bearing properly and it looks like that one is a there we go let's just make sure because you can see inside, I'll show you this way. So just so you can see what will end up being needed, if you look at this gear, the one that we put into here with the thrust bearing, see how there is an edge on one side? Well, that's the edge that has to fit this way so that it sits like that on that gear. So just note that when you're putting this into here, and I think you can see it right down there, you're gonna have to align this properly so that it sits into that gear correctly when you're putting it in. And it should, there. So now it's popped into place. So that's how it's going to sit. So now that that is in, correctly we can move on to this next step and i think we're going to work on putting the uh what is it the gearbox joint in first before we do any of the gears so let's do the joint so if we take one of the ma10s which are the actual ball bearings that came with the kit you can see that that bearing needs to sit into here so we'll push that into place but you can see that the actual gearbox joint needs to go inside of there and then attaches with an e-clip so we'll grab our e-clip and then we'll grab our pliers and grab the pliers make sure that that's sitting where it needs to be and push and there we go you can see the e-clip is in place and now the joint can't come out again so that's now in place so what we're going to do now is you can see that there's this little piece here a3 which looks like that which you can see is what's going to hold everything together so you can see that this sits in that hole, which actually holds in that little 850 bearing. So you know it's not gonna come out. So that's where it needs to sit. So once that's done, you can see that there is a metal tube, which they also want you to grease up. So we'll do that. There we go. And that is going to slide over top of there so it sits just like that. 
Now for this gear, which is this one here, which is going to slide over that um, pipe that we just put on, or tube, you can see that they're showing it, it looks like that, but you can see on the other side, it has this gear here, which is going to blend with the one that we put in earlier. Now before I put that on, I am going to grease this side up a bit, just so we have more. I mean, I always say, you know, I like to be a bit liberal, but at the same time, um, I'd like to be a bit reserved just to save some of the oil or grease, but we've used grease on both sides because we put some on there, so I think we're good. Now, for this, you're gonna have to put a bearing on that side, and we can slide that onto here. So that's down at the bottom now. You know that we have one of the smaller 850 bearings that we're gonna put into here. That fits nicely in there, so that's what it's gonna end up looking like. And they want you to grease this whole gear as well. Now, I like to have the thing inside the gearbox before I grease it, because then it's easier to grease and turn, basically, which is how I like to do it. And we got enough on there, but we're gonna have to put some grease on this one. So we'll do that. Same thing, spin this around. So we've got that all greased up. That's ready to go. So now that that is in and in place, we now need to put this one in, this little little um, shaft, and then one of the bevel gears. So I've kind of pre-greased it a bit here, just to speed things up a little bit. So I've already put grease on this. We slide that into here, and it's loose, because it can be pushed right through to the other side. And then we have this gear here, which is going to be which one is it here? It's your the left one. That is gonna slide over there and fit onto the joint. And that's how it sits. Which is why you have to get this gear in first because that's gonna sit over top of it. So this side of the gearbox is complete for now. So what we're needing to do now is work on the other half of the gearbox and I think what we'll do is we, just as before, I'm gonna put the joint in first before we do anything with the gears. So let's grab the other side of the gearbox and you can see that we need to get the joint in. Now you'll see MA10, well that was one of our ball bearings that came in the kit. So I am going to use that ball bearing for this part. So we're gonna push that in there, there we go. And we're going to grab our uh, gearbox joint, put that in on the one side, and on the other, we need the E-clip. So if we grab the E-clip again, we're gonna put that down in there, make sure that it's tapped going into the groove, and we'll grab our pliers. this snaps into place so there it is so now that joint can't come out of the gearbox so that part is done so now you can see that we have this little bevel gear which is going to sit on top which is now the MA23 bevel gear which you can see is grooved to fit over that joint. So we can actually just sit it right like that. And it's showing that we need to grease it up. So again, I'm using my finger on the other side to spin the joint so that I can get the grease onto the gear.
There we go, just like that. And then we were going to be working with the differential. Now, I in, in all of the kits that I've done, you can see that they're showing you greasing everything up. Okay, we're gonna do that, but I'm gonna show you a different way to do it. So I will put a little bit of grease in there and I've, I, 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 I squeezed it a bit too much, but you see, I'm gonna put some grease into the holes where the little gears are gonna fit. There we go. And we'll put one in there. And one in there. there. Now what I like to do at this point is it's easier to grease them up because you can just spin and grease at the same time. And again with this one. Perfect. And I mean, that grease on here is going to then blend with the grease that we put on that bevel gear too. So I'm not too worried about, you know, not putting too much on because there is enough on this side as well. So the other thing is you can see that the way this is going on, notice that the open holes are facing out. So it's closed on the other side. It may not make a difference, but I prefer to build things the way that it shows in the manual. Um, because you never know, maybe there's a subtle reason why that is. So, knowing that, and that we've greased that up, we can put that over top of there. And now the whole thing is there, ready to go. And of course, they want you to grease that up as well. So, I'm going to just squeeze this, whoa, this up a bit. See, we're already running out of grease. And we'll just squeeze and turn. And in fact, I've gone and got another tube of grease that I've got because it just isn't enough. I always try to say that, you know, try and be liberal with the grease, but not too liberal. But I also find that when you have a four wheel drive chassis and they only give you a small tube of grease, it's almost impossible not to run out. So I would highly suggest getting yourself another tube of grease before starting the build because you want to make sure you've got enough grease in the gearbox anyway. You want to make sure that everything's nice and lubed. So you don't want to run out or run it dry. And in some ways, one of the theories would be that it's better to have too much in there than not enough. So there we go. So there is the other side. So now we have one last thing to do. And that is this part here, these little foam pieces. They're calling it urethane bushing, but I don't really get how they call it a bushing but anyway um, you can see how this is designed you need to be able to cut that in half and the easiest way is going to be a zacto knife so I'm gonna hold it with my hand my two fingers find the middle middle of that looks about right and I'm going to cut So it's not, it's not perfect cut, but it's pretty close. So let's take the one piece and you can see uh, the bushing right there. We're going to put that in and I'm going to use a small um, Allen wrench screwdriver to push that in all the way. And we're going to do the same thing 
with the other side. So I'll take that little piece, put that in, and push that in all the way to the other side, just like that. Okay, so now that those are in, we are actually finished with step two. So we can now move on to step three and work on putting together the gearbox, but we've got a couple of pieces we have to put in there before we can do that. Mm -hmm. 